I'm at a gypsy. Why shouldn't we be able to sell T-shirts? Why shouldn't Troy Lee's team sell T-shirts? You know, but we, we, we weren't allowed to do that because we got to protect this guy, John Ayers, and he can be the only one selling T-shirts. Yeah, and if we I want- actually pushed Davey on that last night. Yeah. That was one thing I didn't understand. And, and back to our T-shirt guy in defense of our T-shirt guy, um, Ronnie, he was only selling Glen Helen apparel, which was not what John Ayers was selling. So he would just have well, something that and, had Glen Helen, no national, and, national. But, but so Davey told me because so it's actually that's one of my point of contentions yeah. as with the series, and I and I've actually I didn't get to talk about it with Davey on the podcast. We just run out of time. Um, but yeah, I've always been like I think there's it's kind of sucks that people can't sell their own t-shirts. Um, but Apparently you can, in, you've, but you've got to go through the – you've got to buy a vendor. So you actually can if you if you pay the price, which would essentially be you guys paying yourself. Well, we were told as long as it didn't have a motorcycle on it. Well, I think from what Davey told me anyway, it said as long as it didn't have Glen Helen National, it just the, – the national rights went to John Ayres. And so John Ayres also – does and so he was the one of the mpg guys so he's kind of grandfathered in which i wasn't aware of um but so they actually do all of the finish line all of the signage Correct. all of the track infrastructure so it's like a bit of a tied together deal and the reason that was explained to me is the reason why is that it's consistency that was the biggest thing that dmg said is that the series has to be consistent and that's essentially what feld does Feld rolls in with their trucks, the scaffolding, the finish line, the towers, the scoreboard, that, and it all is the same every single weekend. And so John Ayres is tied to the infrastructure and the shirts in the same way. And I was actually talking to Davey about, and I just said, well, you know, if you're a privateer and you want to sell merch, like, what's the deal? And he's like, well, if you pay the vendor fee and you go as a vendor, you can sell T-shirts, okay. right? And I, and I even said... Because fuck, t- selling t-shirts sucks. Like we did our race and we had like 3,000 people at our race and we didn't really sell many t-shirts. And then my wife had to refold them and they were dusty and dirty. And like, so yeah. it's a whole thing. And so I said to Dave, I was like, well, could people just do like an online store? Like you get your quick shade and you have your online store, you pay your money, bang. And instead of carrying it around all day, you can, you get it in the mail a couple of days later. And he said, that's, that's fine as well. So the t-shirts were a thing that I was a bit, like, well, yeah, it kind of seems insane that people can't sell T-shirts. But. You mentioned uh, John Ayers. We paid We paid for John Ayers for doing all that. That was a paid fee. There was a well, fee for make, that. Yeah, but it so, makes sense. It cost him money. It cost him money to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. And, and that was the same thing when we did it, and John Ayers did do a uniformed yeah. Um, yeah. production, yes. Yeah. Yes, he but did. It was, paid. it was paid by us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 By which all make, the promoters. Yeah, correct. which makes sense. Yes. Um, so... I guess where so I'll, I'll read you actually just to clarify. So I actually just said to I, I messaged Davey last night and I just said I just want to know like exactly what the deal is with all this, right? So basically, this is directly from from Davey. He said each track keeps their own parking, camping, concessions, spectator tickets, presenting sponsors, and vendors, plus amateur days t-shirt sales, whatever. MX Sports pays the rights fee to DMG and spreads it across the tracks, including our two, was three, but we dropped Steel City off for the sake of trying uh, the Southeast and it failed. MX Sports does the day-to-day running of the series, doing the TV and streaming package, um, which he admits was a debacle with Math TV. Uh, and we take care of infrastructure of an event, series sponsors, media, everyday entries and licensing, rule book, working with the OEMs, rider licensing, the entry with AMA Pro Racing, uh, media tents, paddock control, hard cards, website, TV production, live timing and scoring, and the heavy lifting uh, that no one sees 364 other days for the year. Tracks pay their own purse, uh, which... In 17, which is the last, uh, sorry, in 18, which is the last time you guys did the national, uh, was 70,000. Now it's 100,000. We do all of the commercials, the series website, the series marketing, the series awards, the series social media, uh, and then the series bidding within 
the industry. So that that is that's that's essentially just like a top down breakdown of like who keeps what, who gets what, and then so I'd spoken to multiple promoters that have said it's like a it's very profitable. So I guess and the re- I know it's not just about the money, but I guess the the thing that I've kind of come to think about this situation over the last few weeks is that there's 11 people that are happy that seem, you know what I mean? Correct. And there's 11 people making money and, and no one that I spoke to and, and it was all off the record. People told me numbers. People told me how much money they make people like, and people told me some of the shit that they didn't like, you know, that, that it, it was gnarly. Like, and that I had some of the bigger promoters say that they feel for tracks like Lakewood where they don't do a big practice, they don't have camping, it's like a one day. And he said like yeah, they probably don't make money. But then the tracks that have amateur day, camping, the gates open Wednesday or whatever, and then they do um, a practice after, like they sell a title sponsor. Uh, all of the promoters that I spoke to as well said that ticket sales were actually up 30% last year. Right. And yeah. they attribute that to SMX. Basically, they said like the fact that the series came together and it's so much bigger on TV and it's actually, it's got, so they said it's gotten, it was good and now it's really good. So the, the thing, I guess my, where I got to in all of this is like, fuck, there's 11 people that are making it work. And there's one track that we all want that isn't making it work, you know, and and like I... Well, uh, you've been been in business, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're in business with a partner and he basically uh, breaches his uh, relationship with you. It's hard for you to trust him. And uh, that's where I'm at. I think that uh, I was all in. And uh, when, when I found out that this all happened in one day, the going from no bid to you know, there's some inside stuff going on there that, and we had somebody that was supposed to be representing us and they weren't representing us. So, yeah. so somebody did something that wasn't ethical as far as I'm concerned. And they're, and I, I can't, I can't be involved in that. Now we, we are Glenn Helen we're working with Travis Pastrana. We got we always yeah. You don't it. need the nationals. No, no. no yeah. And and we want the nationals, but I don't want to be in a situation where there's one organization right now that controls everything that goes on in the nationals, the Coombs family, and I don't think that's healthy. I don't think it's healthy for the sport long term. There should be uh uh you know the the riders should get a percentage of the gate. The the team should get a percentage of the gate. The sanctioning body should be a sanctioning body, and only that. And the promoter, but I think I, th- I think the san- well, I guess there the, is no san- the the sanctioning body is MX Sports. No, but it's AMA. I, we, I think that's where it's, we're losing each. We're talking over each other because it's not AMA. If you enjoyed this content, please like and subscribe. And to listen to the full three-hour podcast, search Gypsy Tales in your favorite podcast platform, or click the link in the description below. Gypsy Gang.